I guess you've heard that there are different types of solea with different names, right? Different labels like solea de Triana, solea de Alcalá, solea de Cadiz. So here is the question, how do we tell them apart? What's the difference between a solea de Alcalá, a solea de Jerez, a solea de Cadiz, a solea de Triana? Hi, this is Guillermo Guillén for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Today, let's dive into the messy world of denomination and classification of palos and styles in flamenco. We'll explore these different names and labels, see what they really mean, more specifically today, Port Solea, and why and how they can be both useful and misleading in understanding this palo in particular, but also the broader flamenco repertoire. But first, we need to quickly clarify a few concepts. When we say that we are going to sing, to dance or to play por solea, and here I emphasize the significance of the word por as I explained here. This means that we are going to play, sing or dance according to the rules of the game of the palo solea. It mainly means two things. We play within its specific framework with key parameters such as the compass, the rhythmic cycle, and the harmonic context. So for the palo solea, we have a 12-beat solea type compass, and the harmonic context is the flamenco mode Andalusian cadence. But only with this framework, you can't actually be completely sure that we are talking about solea, because there are many other palos that share this same framework like Bureria por Solea, La Caña, El Polo, La Bambera, El Romance por Solea, Fandango por Solea. As always, the real and reliable distinctive feature of a palo is its cante. Always keep in mind that a palo primarily refers to a type of cante, with the core concept of estilos or styles, which I've already explained in another video too. When a singer sings a traditional letra, they don't sing a random, improvised or newly created original melody. They sing a very specific, pre-existing and unique melody called an estilo, a style. In each palo, there are many different styles and each style is unique to this specific palo. So in a cante or a baile, if you have like for example, three letras, you have to choose a specific style for each one of them. Sometimes you can repeat styles, repeat melodies. Most of the time we prefer to alternate and have different styles. But these styles are not like melodies written on music sheets where everyone is supposed to sing exactly the same melody all the time. Think of them more like a melodic path with specific key points that we have to hit, but not in a very, very strict way, always with possible deviations, variations. One important precision here. We often associate melodies with certain lyrics. But always remember, we don't care about the lyrics. The lyrics don't define the style at all. Lyrics are interchangeable. You can use different lyrics with the same melody. I explain all this here. So when identifying a style, focus on the melody, only the melody. Por Solea, there are dozens or even over a hundred unique styles, and they only belong to Solea. To the untrained ear, they all might sound quite similar. But for instance, just focusing on the opening lines of different styles of Solea, I'm sure you can hear a very big difference. And to show you the danger of relying on the lyrics, let's listen to these different styles, always with the same lyrics. Me voy. Y yo me pasaba a otra 
Three different styles, three different melodies. Very clear, right? There are so many different styles, especially for Solea. We need to group them together. We need to classify them. We could do that in many different ways. Think of the way you could classify different animals, like by vertebrate, invertebrate, with feathers or hair or scales, number of legs, size, do they have horns or do they have whatever. We often group Solea styles by their geographic origin. And this is completely arbitrary. We could do this in many other different ways. We could do it differently and for practical reasons we should do it differently. You will soon understand why, but this is just the way it is usually organized. The main regions, cities or towns where Solea developed are Triana in Seville, Alcala de Guanaira, very close to Seville, the area Lebrija, Utrera, Marchena, in Cadiz, Jerez, and Córdoba. So here are three fundamental points. This may seem obvious now, but let's precise that geographic labels of Solea only refer to cante. If you are just playing guitar or dancing por Solea without a singer singing, you can't play or dance por Solea de Alcalá or por Solea de Trian. You are just playing or dancing por Solea, because the geographic distinction comes from the style that is being sung. So cante. Not the guitar part, not the guitar position por medio, por arriba, or not the tempo. A geographic label represents a group of styles, not just one specific melody. Solea de Alcala is not one specific melody, it is not a specific style, it is a set of different styles. And within the Solea de Alcala group, there are at least a dozen of different styles. And within Solea de Triana, the biggest group, there are maybe 50 different styles. And the third and maybe the main point is that geographic labels don't provide any specific musical information that applies to the entire group. They only indicate the origin of the style, or better said, the origin of the singer who created or recreated, developed or popularized that style. There is no clear musical common element among the styles within a geographic group that differentiates them from styles of another group. More on that in a moment. So we need to get more specific. And this is when we use a name tag with usually the name of the singer who supposedly created the style, such as Ramon El Ollero, Joaquin de la Paula, Enrique El Meguizo, or Antonio Frijones. Singers are usually associated with the place where they were born or where they lived, but it's not really the style itself that is from Alcalá, Triana, Cádiz or Jerez. It's the singer. Styles don't grow from the soil. They grow in singers' throats, hearts and souls. So the sequence of labels expands with each piece of information, usually starting with the palo, then the location and then the artist, as in Solea, de Triana, de Ramón El Ollero, Solea de Alcalá, de Joaquín de la Paula, Solea de Cádiz, de Enrique El Meguizo, Solea de Jerez, de Antonio Frijones. For convenience, in a normal flamenco conversation, the geographic labels and also sometimes the first name of the singers are left out because we assume that we know what we are talking about, whom we are talking about, and where they are from. So we have La Solea de Ramón de Rogero, La Solea de Joaquín de la Paula, La Solea del Meguizo, or La Solea de Frijones. So here you can already find many problems and contradictions with this classification system. For example, Joaquín de la Paula was born and died in Alcalá de Guadaira. He created four styles of Solea and we put them in the bag Solea de Alcalá. There it is simple, right? But now imagine that Joaquin de la Paula were born not in Alcalá, but in Cádiz. Then his styles would be Solea de Cádiz. As simple as that. Another example. There are seven styles por Solea that are attributed to Merced la Cerneta. Very nice, beautiful styles por Solea. It seems that she was born in Jerez, she started her career and lived in Seville, and then later she moved to Utrera, where she died. So where are her Solea styles from? 
from Jerez, from Sevilla, from Triana, from Utrera. Not everyone agrees. Some people say that certain styles should belong to Triana and others to Utrera. And there are people saying that they are just Solea de Jerez. The status quo is to say Solea de la Cerneta. And we just avoid the problem. Quick interruption to remind you to subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. Thank you. So with these two labels, location plus name of a singer, are we finally referring to a specific style, a specific melody? Not yet, or it depends. In my first example, La Solea de Ramon El Ollero, yes, because there is only one style, the Solea de Triana de Ramon El Ollero. But in the case of so many other singers, there are multiple styles under the name. Like Joaquin de la Paula has four styles, La Serneta has seven, El Meiso has three, and Frijones maybe four. So if you say La Solea de Joaquin de la Paula, de la Serneta, del Meiso, or de Frijones, you have considerably narrowed down the number of possible styles you are referring to, but it still doesn't refer to any precise melody. So when a creator has multiple styles to refer to a specific one, we need to go even further with a number tag, such as Solea de Alcalá de Joaquín de la Paula, number one, number two, number three, number four. Solea de Cádiz del Mellizo, number one, number two, number three. Solea de la Cerneta, number one, number two, number three. Now, yes, we are talking about a specific musical, melodic, and unique reference. The melody of La Solea de Alcalá de Joaquín de la Paula number three is unique. There is no other style with exactly the same melody. Otherwise, it would be the same style. A short parenthesis here. In the group Solea de Triana, there is a subcategory that we call Solea Apola. This is another type of label referring to certain styles used to rematar or conclude el polo, which is another palo. So el polo, la solea apolada, kind of too much el polo, became apola in Andalusian pronunciation. We'll talk about this group of solea apola another day. This all might seem super organized with labels, with hierarchies, but classifying styles in such a precise way is mostly for flamencologists or cante nerds like me who love to classify and categorize everything. But in the real world, things get looser. You'll never hear a dancer asking the singer, now I want the letra de la serneta number seven. Hit me with that solea del mellizo number three. While that would be super practical, it doesn't happen. If you want to ask for a specific style, you usually hum the melody or you just sing a letra as an example. But ultimately, all that doesn't matter. The main point is not memorizing catalogs of names of styles, but knowing the styles themselves, their music, their melody, their structure, their possible processing, how and where we can interact, where to rematar, where to contestar, where to recoger, this classification actually often generates a lot of confusion and misconceptions. First, because there is not one single definitive classification of styles that everybody agrees on, and also because we often confuse two distinct concepts that have nothing to do with each other. What is a classification tool and what is an identification tool? So when we talk about geographic and name tags in Solea styles, we are discussing classification. Just a way of grouping, organizing styles in categories rather than just having a bunch of different melodies out there. However, these tags don't correspond to any musical or technical feature, and there are therefore no tool for recognition. Imagine that you have to recognize a very specific species of butterfly, and to do so, you are just told they live in Europe. We agree that it doesn't help much, right? Because this is not a recognition criteria like the color or the size, it's just where they live. Maybe you, like me, at some point thought that there was a magic formula, a single common musical element that defines all the styles de Solea de Alcala, and then another element that defines all the styles de Solea de Triana, and that finding these little elements could help differentiate them, but no. And same thing about the name tags. The so name tags aren't musical information either, so forget about finding one defining characteristics 
for all the styles de Joaquín de la Paula. Each of his four styles is a unique melody. We want to find simple connections and commonalities within these groupings, but they basically share no more in common with each other in a specific group than they do with any other solea style in any other group. Maybe yes, there is a specific flavor to estilos from a specific region or from a specific creator, but it's very subtle and you really have to be a great cante aficionado to perceive such subtleties. It's like recognizing a red wine from France or Spain or California or South Africa in a blind test with a bottle without label. On the other hand, identifying a style is a process. The identification process usually works this way. You hear something and first you just don't know what it is. Then your brain starts working and analyzes possible parameters, like the compass, the harmonic context, maybe the tempo, even though it's not really reliable, remember? And little by little you draw conclusions and you narrow down possibilities. Like, oh, this is a 12-bit solea type compass and this is in flamenco mode, so again, remember, it could be Solea, Bureria por Solea, La Bambera, La Caña, El Polo, Romance. But then if you want to go further in the identification, you must recognize the cante melody. When you hear a letra, either you recognize the style because you know it, or you can only recognize the framework, nothing more. This is why we have to learn the different styles in the different palos. No shortcuts there. As I said, Solea is a very rich palo with about a hundred styles. But don't feel overwhelmed by the vast sea of Solea styles. You actually don't need to know them all at all. If you apply the 80-20 rule or the Pareto principles that I explained here, you can be very strategic. Instead of getting lost in every single style one after the other, you'll target and focus on the most common ones. The ones that people usually sing, dance and want to hear. Then once you know these styles, this whole process becomes instant. It's like when you hear the happy birthday to you song, you just recognize it instantly because you know it. A friend of mine once summed it up brilliantly saying, recognition requires cognition. There are styles that are very similar because they are variants of each other. There are also styles that share lines or parts. And there are also singers who sometimes cross styles. They sing a letra with the beginning of a style and the end of another one. There are singers who are very orthodox. They stick really close to a chosen modern. But there are others who get very personal, creative, or maybe even miss the mark a bit sometimes. All these crazy things exist. I know that it's a lot, but we are talking about art and creativity has no limits. This is one of the key things in flamenco, right? Everything is about individuality and personality, not flamenco robots. It's about putting your own twist on things, even within a style. And this creativity and flexibility within styles is actually how flamenco itself evolves most of the time. Singers personalize, explore, and sometimes bend the rules. Over time, these explorations become so distinct that they create entirely new styles. Now you know that geographic and name labels are for classification, not for identification. To truly understand flamenco, focus on the cante itself. Deep listening and knowledge of the style is key. There is no shortcut. The richness lies in the exploration of these unique melodies. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, if it helped you, please give it a like, share it, subscribe to the channel. Also, please consider supporting my work on Patreon. The link is in the description. And visit flamencomaps.com where I explain my classes, my courses, and my way of teaching flamenco. I see you there. Till then, listen to Kante.